Welcome to Termite Machine Works. My name is Keith. Today we're starting a new project and we're going to be working on a pair of motorcycle rims. And these rims are the rear rim on a custom drag bike. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get these uncovered. And uh, we're going to give you a good shot at this drag bike. And here's the sprocket that uh, he brought in. And we have a we have a new sprocket that we're going to be mounting and replacing on this. But you can <laughs> you can you can is is that getting your mileage out of your sprocket? Um, that's you know that's dangerous and also too you know you're going to be looking at what damage we're actually going to be fixing on this thing and you kind of um, you know when at least when I was racing uh, you know you had inspections and uh, you were making sure that you were up to par and everything else especially this is an aluminum sprocket um, that that's scary right there I you know to me I I don't know about uh, anybody else. Uh, the, the rest of this hub right here, we've got a couple different uh, spacers and uh, it's got a six hole pattern in here and then it has another four hole pattern that goes into the side of the rim. Now this rim right here, I'm going to set this over here, the second rim that we have over here, he has a pair of them because uh, when, uh, you know, when he's getting going on his bike, he doesn't want downtime and if you had to change uh, even tires out, it's going to be at least a uh, drawn out process to drop the whole thing off, change out the wheel and put everything back together. So if uh, if he has the painted up rims and, uh, and he can swap out the tire within oh three four hours and uh, and get back on the, the program there, uh, that's that's why he has the multiple units. But this um, this rim here is the one that this disc was mounted on here and we actually pulled out some threads here and uh, you can see that that one's still in there and these are pretty well stretched out um, we're gonna be redoing this face on here as well so we're gonna we got a little bit of work to do on both of them this is actually a good rim and this gives uh, our dimensions and uh, we got the uh, the brake disc on this side here and I'm also gonna go ahead and pull out some bearings get some numbers and we're gonna get some replacements on those as well so I think the first thing we're going to be doing is just getting this aluminum hub out of here and then we have a chunk of aluminum right here that we're going to be taking and cutting a piece off to go ahead and fabricate this hub itself. Alright, so that's what we got going on uh, today. All right, we pulled the sprocket. We have a nut off on that side over there, and the shaft comes out this way here. And the shaft is stepped, and it's got a couple different shoulders and some sleeves in here. We're going to have to be uh, working with as well because this sleeve right here goes inside that bearing, and that bearing is already spun on the sleeve here. All right, so we got we got some issues with that uh, there. So we're going to be pulling this off of here, polishing up the shaft. We're going to check the shaft for straightness and sizing and dimensions and all that. And it's got plenty of never season stuff in there, but um, you know some of the uh, the wear on here uh, is not necessarily rust or corrosion. It it is things that have changed, like this bearing right here and this plate. Um, this looks pretty dry, crusty, and it has spun on there. So we know that diameter is pretty well shot. All right, now we got the bearing in here on this side here, and then this is a cone that's uh, relieved, sits on the register here. We got a secondary bearing in here, and that bearing there feels pretty good. But we're gonna be we're gonna be picking up new bearings all the way around here, so we can start fresh again. Now, 
of course this was mounted on the other rim that we have those holes that had um, that had breaks in them okay and they were they're held in these four are held in with sockets uh, socket head and then the other six hole pattern bolts into here that holds the sprocket on and you can see that these actually got loose and this fret that's all galled aluminum right there um, so you know this <laughs> That's why we're making a new piece here. That's what it's really telling you. And, uh, and this had a sleeve on here, and I'm not sure. Uh, you know, we're going to be looking at maybe making that diameter solid. There is some relief here. This is, fits in real, real close to the actual frame that this sets into. So they do have some of this has actually got to have that angle cut into there. That's rubbing where it was making contact. So once this thing got loose and was walking off to the side, it was really gouging in on the side here. So, all right, we're just gonna we're setting it up on parallels here, and we're just gonna take the slug and we're gonna press that out. We just ran out of travel there. Yeah, that's not the sweetest looking bearing there. All right, we got to clean this up and get some numbers off of it. And uh, yeah, there's not much of that, is there? All right, we went in and took the Enco saw and we took a piece off of that billet there. And our part is our part's approximately about two inches long. And we want plenty of room out here. We're going to actually machine one whole complete side of this part. And then we're going to part it off. And then we'll be able to then turn it around locating on certain diameters that we're going to have um, set up to create the or duplicate the axis or the spinning part true uh, for our second setup. To, because we got, we got uh, a register here. And a bearing diameter here and then turn it around and we have a face and another register here all right and this side here and this side here have got to be running true with each other so that's kind of why we're setting the part up so we can get this out so we're not resting up here and we're going to be hanging this out somewhat and when you hang something out there it's going to have a slight bit of run out But we want to go ahead and we want to set that up square and uh, you know even even uh, you can verify that with taking your machine to scale and that's uh, like 850 that's like 860 840 so it's not exactly running true here anyway you know you got you got, you got the 840 there 860 down there you, know, you got about 20 thousands that you're not you're, you're running out out, out here and I can see that running out on the back side as well. You can really see the space running out here. Um, and it's, it's kind of duplicating what's over here. What we want to do is go ahead and put the indicator here so that we we're at least know that we're going to be square with the axis of the jaw. So that if we happen to have a mishap or um, the pressure or temperature is growing or shrinking on the three jaw, we're going to maintain a good tension on that. And I like to go ahead all right, that's almost set up just right. All right, um, put the indicator over here, and we'll put it in neutral here. So our our indicators, we're reading we're reading about twenty twenty five thousandths out right there. So I'm just I'm bumping. This is this is the low, so I want to bring it back this way here, and. Uh, we just need to bring it back about twelve thousands or something like that. All right, we uh, we got about fifteen there, about five there, 
we're running within two thousands right there. And that's close enough. Now what I do is now I go ahead and I kind of I go around the chuck. I I hit all three of these positions here. He's on just I the scroll. This chuck is old. And I just want to make sure that everything is joining in and and uh, creating the same pressure all the way around and locking it in good. All right, we're we're still running within about two thousands there. All right, we should be able to see an improvement now on the running. And it is. You can still see this face running out because it's running out in relationship to this. This cut wasn't quite exactly center, whether our vice or jaw or whatever out there um, in that setup of the saw for how much we were cutting. It's, uh, it's got a little run out on it. The backside is still running out about 20, 30 thousand. All right, now we're going to be running, I already have high speed in here, and this is my standard uh, turning and facing grind on that tool bit, and that's probably about a four-year-old bit. So it it is a little bit lower than it, it was, and it's a little bit angled back than it was, and you know, it, there's there's been a lot of grinding going on here. So kind of what I was, but it's still the original shape that I put on the cutter to start with. <clears throat> and uh, we're giving it an angle over here. I'm going to come in here. You want to verify that you're actually cutting on center. Sometimes I don't know if I was above, below, or whatever, but we're, we're set right here and we're locked in. So we're going to come in, we're going to touch and find out where we're at as far as center on our part. <laughs> Okay, I just touched out here and I came in and it came right in and it cleaned it all the way to the center. If you were a little bit below, it would leave a little tit sticking out. If you're a little bit above, you would get so far down and it would like really like being pushing. Uh, because you're not really cutting it. Your, your cutting edge actually becomes above center. And uh, you, you almost hit a, a, a wall, so to speak, as far as the pressure going in. And uh, sometimes it, it'll actually push your carriage out depending on the, the pressures. Um, if you notice that you're not cutting easy when you get in close, uh, really give it an eyeball, really horizontal with it, and uh, you'll probably find that you are above center. Um, I've been playing with this, so evidently I was playing uh, with it set there. So what we're going to do is we're going to touch off, and we're going to go ahead and start with a straight piece. I didn't set no feed. I change out my aluminum, my cans here, uh, and I'm still I still use uh, a can for holding my aluma tap, and I like the brush on method because it just seems to use less. And this is just a can with a, a giant nut in the bottom, so it kind of keeps it weighted. And uh, you know this is a good comfortable spot. I like it up there out of the way. You really don't need a whole bunch of it. You just need a light coating on there. It kind of does get sucked in on a bit. The heat will draw it in there and it just keeps it from galling up. All right, sometimes you, you look at this and this is smooth, but you get that foggy color um, a couple little different spots here where the chips actually roll over and they might rub or, or grab that. And sometimes a real, real fine cut and coming in the opposite direction to where you got a little different clearance in, uh, on how your, your cut comes off of there, you can pick up a gloss. So we're going to go ahead and we reversed our direction. We're going to just touch off in the center. We're going to feed on out. We're going to see about getting a gloss face on there. Sometimes changing your direction can let, let you do that.
Okay, for the most part, it did give me a better gloss. Uh, it had one little ring right in there that was kind of uh, almost where the, the chip rolls back and it kind of galls back on there. All right, but we're going to have a bearing in here. We're going to have a bearing diameter in here. So it's not really, that's, all this area out here is pretty clean. So, And we're going to be boring back on here. So really, there isn't too much of this space that's going to be a concern. I was just kind of pointing out that sometimes you can reverse your feed and on a face cut and you can get a better cut you can also change out your speed and also your you can reshape the end of this a little bit uh, spoon style there's a couple different things that you can do to create a better smooth cut there all right but we're going to just get on with the project here and and uh, we're going to start hogging off this material now to become the shoulder in here all right we're um coming in here i just kissed there so we're going to be about 50 thousandths over our finished diameter there and this is about one inch deep here and of course we've got a lot of chewed up stuff here to look at and play with but i'm kind of going by about one 100 um is our depth there so we're going to go ahead and we're going to whittle this out probably one inch uh oh and 75 thousandths and it's going to be about 50. We're going to get this just whittle clean. And um, then we're going to come in and we're going to open up some of this, this center here. So that we have at least down rough for this diameter here. And then once we have all of that, we'll double check on this thickness out here. Then we're going to let the thing cool down to normal uh, temperature here for a bit and then we'll start going for some finishing dimensions not that this is real hot from hogging off because we've had a, a little bit of breaks uh running around doing some other things on the in the shop here and getting ready and we were on the phone with the uh the bearing supplier and we're going to have the bearings for these things and we might be doing a little shopping for a new bearing puller i uh <clears throat> i gotta be able to reach in those hubs and pull those bearings out and I'm kind of looking for the right tool. Alrighty, here we go. see we came out and that's that's kind of new surface right there but uh that was only taking like five thousandths off of the difference of depth that we've been going so we're going to go ahead and we're just going to be we're going to be hand cranking in and we're just going to make a couple passes till we get uh oh we get about fifty thousandths uh seventy five thousandths taken off of that face and then i'm doing two cuts there's about 35 shoulder like this you're always gonna be either confronted with uh, leaving a radius in there for strength and stuff like that so not every time are you gonna be coming into a real razor sharp point like this but if you are most of the time you have to use a braze tool bit or a hand sharpened to a fine tip to get a fine point in there now I usually have something will be broken or radius on the inside mate, mating between the bore and the face that, that the next part slides on here. Should have some kind of a relief in it. But this one here is done real sharp and we know that it's going to be at least minimum. Meaning uh, as sharp as possible but it's not important to make it razor sharp. Otherwise, you can come in and you can put a relief below this diameter here uh, so that, you know, anything that slides against this will come against that face and be located by the diameter itself.
about 75 thousandths on the depth and we are almost 3300 there and now from there out to there is 1-3 and it really only needs to be like 1-2 and we're going to measure the overall outside diameter. This is a 6 inch blank that we ordered and of course the munged up ring here is 5 inches 700 thousandths. 5 inches 700 and we're six inches, five thousand, six thousand, something like that over the outside. So we got about a hundred and a half to take off of the outside diameter as well. We will go ahead and uh, uh, take that now. We're just gonna we'll take a uh, we'll take a hundred thousands off of it and we'll leave it rough like that. <laughs> Also the beauty if you're holding the scale right and you got it at an angle you can come in and you can hold that almost right to the shoulder as you're spinning. This is uh, 1350 on the uh, depth of there and the, of course the the width or shank of this is only 1900 and we're going to have a parting tool width whatever so I got it down this is more than enough but uh, you know we're not we're not going to be shy of anything there. We'll still be adjusting uh, all of our depths here in relationship to each other as we go for the final dimensions on all the faces and the diameters. All right, now we're going to set up with a drill and we're going to come in here and we're going to start opening up the center.
makes you wish every hole drilled just like that one. Uh, and I'm, uh, you know, I'll be sad when I end up chipping a bit or have to resharpen this because I got, I got this big drill bit pretty even right now. And uh, you've seen it, uh, you've seen it do steel the other day, and you know now it's doing aluminum. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to get this kind of a little bit cleared out here and get set up with a boring bar. All right, I just wanted to uh, flash back on, on a, a little subject that I brought on to. And, and I think it's important because we're going to be switching around some tooling here. And I just do some things automatic and I just kind of wanted you guys to uh, uh, kind of just know how things are automatic to me in some cases there. Now we were doing a lot of turning with this high speed tool bit right here okay now whether uh, no matter where this tool bits um, facing okay um, it, it still is center line in relationship to where we came over and we touched off on that center at the very beginning we kind of made sure that the tool bit was on center it is nice to know exactly where center is and sometimes you want to know that relationship to areas on your lathe because let's just say that we're going to take and, it, and we are actually going to take this out and <clears throat> we're going to be popping this in okay and we want to go ahead and work on this bore all right now after we know this this is on center then we can go ahead and we can take a ruler or a scale and i have originally when i first not exactly when i when i got this lathe but shortly within the first few days weeks of of owning this and getting my tool bits all set up i did find center and i actually took it was a black sharpie at that time and up on my my backboard behind the uh, chuck here in the headstock i wrote down 6.230 and that is my dimension from this surface right here to my my center line and after knowing that I can go ahead and actually have a blank block in here and set up a tool bit and without touching or gauging anything in here I can measure down to that now there's there's other area it doesn't have to be this spot every lathe doesn't have this spot there might be a flat over here you also might be able to swing it over here and actually measure it off of your compound top um, there's there's a lot of different areas you could actually come over here if you wanted to and you could measure down to this flat spot on there finding a reference point to, to take a machine of scale and come up and measure center line is pretty handy and I just wanted to point that out all right let's go ahead and we're gonna get on with the project now here and uh, back to where we were all right I'm gonna throw in this bit here and we're gonna go ahead and we have this diameter here, which is just going to be uh, actually, well, I, I took the inside micrometers and, and we're going to be playing with that. I'm going to be using snap gauges and inside micrometers to measure this. And this is 2 and uh, 3 16 or 2.1875. And uh, we're going to come in and bore, rough bore that. We got the, the bearings are going to be coming in today. I hope they come in this morning instead of this afternoon uh, because I would like to have the brand new bearing. But we'll go ahead and and uh, open up the book and we'll see what we got for bearing diameters and uh, the bearing that was in here you know it's pretty it's pretty rusty on the outside it's probably still got a good diameter it was a good press fit in there and uh, we'll be able to gauge it but I, I still like to go with manufacturers recommendations sometimes on the uh, on the press fits on them all right because this thing is old this thing is beat somebody had made a mistake and made a sleeve on here that move shifted and uh you know it's it, it really is this is a total modification because this is not a stock bike all right so boy that looks bad <laughs> i mean making this thing's one but we got we got to clean up the the junk we're going to be mounting this onto as well so uh, you know we got to look past that pretty orange paint job okay so we slap our our boring bit in here now we're going to be <clears throat> we're going to be boring and we want to know that at least we're going to be slightly above 
that. So I look at it and I scale up here and we're uh, 6, 260 or so. So I know that I'm at least um, 25 or 30 thousandths because I'm just glancing at a scale and I know I can read that within at least 5 thousandths at a glance. Only because my glasses are perfectly fine and they give me perfect vision. Alright, now we're going to swing this around. I also want you to notice that um, this this is a standard regular purchase boring bar and uh, you know they hit fit in a Crichton and a couple of your other three quarter inch shank uh, boring bars but I also use it in the lathe here on a CA2 holder it has a V slot in it very nice to hold slender now you can see how it has a curve in there I did heat this cherry red with it in the lathe here and in the holder and then I pulled that over because I've I've machine or I've, I've ground off quite a bit of this and I and I've taken more of this than I have the depth here so I kind of curved that over so that I can have that clearance in on this front side here so uh, as long as you don't quench that you let it cool down slowly and uh, I've had no problem with it and it also has maintained its hardness all right so anyhow we got that at the right height now we're just gonna get our working room here make sure that we have a uh, side clearance there and and end we want to make sure that we're not going to bottom out at the butt end of the bit we want to bottom out at the tip all right now i'm going to bring it in here and without rotating it close to the edge I want to go in and I want to touch that drill point at the bottom.